So, you want to buy a Mosin, do you? Well, I hope this video will help you out. Hey guys, it's me, welcome back. Today we're going to cover a topic that uh, almost anybody who's got into firearms in America has probably looked into or already made their mind up. And that is these normally $99 to $130 often Russian bolt action rifles that we Americans pronounce as Mosin Nagant. Although I believe the closest pronunciation I can do is the Moshin Nagant. Or something along those lines. I'm just going to call it a Mosin for this video, so if you're really upset with it, deal with it. But anyway, what I'm going to do in this video <clears throat> is give you kind of a basic idea of what the Mosin is, what it's capable of, uh, and um, what you should consider if you're interested in buying one of these. And uh, we'll kind of go over the basic overview of a couple different models. So let's get started. Alright, if you go looking. If you're interested in a Mosin Nagant, the gun you're going to find the most common is the uh, M9138, probably a Russian model. Uh, it's very similar to this model at the top. Let me move it and give you an idea. Um, it'll be very similar to this, except it will not have a bent bolt. It'll have a straight bolt, and it won't have a scope. So I have this out. This is a sniper version, and we'll get to that. You go to your local gun store, you'll see them for anywhere from $99 to about $130. Uh, you can find them all the way down to $69 or $70 if you buy enough of them, and you could find them for that price back in the day. But what is a nose and a gun, really? Well, it's a very old Russian and French, and I believe Belgian designed bolt action rifle made in the late 19th century, and it was used by the Russians all the way up through World War II by the Chinese, the North Koreans, the Czechs, pretty much almost of Eastern Europe, um, on the Vietnamese, um, and it's still used today by the Taliban and other rebel groups for several different reasons. One, the Russians made over 80 million of them, and that's just the Russians, other countries made them. Two, it's a very rugged, reliable design, and three, it's a very simple design and for, what it, and for what it's meant to do, it does it very well. So, what you'll see on the table here are two of the more uncommon Mosins. Uh, the first one, as I showed you before, is a sniper variant Mosin with a bent bolt and PU scope. These run a bit more, even for reproductions. They run, uh, I think, about $800. Now below, this is actually a Chinese Mosin that has been modified by me and do a, kind of a scout gun. And this is a carbine, has a much shorter barrel. Um, I'll post information to barrel links and so on and so forth. But basically, these two factory-wise are going to be what you're going to run into common, the most common. It's going to be the carbine and the standard M9130. The carbines, or carbine, however you want to pronounce it, are going to run you a little bit more. Uh, the Chinese ones usually start about 200. And I've seen the Russian ones go for an average of about 300. Now, before anybody has a hissy fit, let me make one thing abundantly clear. None of these guns are rare. There are some Mosins that are rarer than others. Uh, there's some American-made Westinghouses and some of the early French-made first-generation models that are rare in that there's not as many of them around. But none of them are hard to find. If you want a Westinghouse or, or a French Mosin, you could find one fairly easily. So if somebody tells you don't don't do anything near Mosin. It's super rare. They're worth money. They're full of crap. There's there's millions of these rifles. They're not going to be rare for a very long time. And uh, <clears throat> don't uh, like I said, don't take that into consideration when you're looking for one. If you decide you want to modify it, as I said, it's a hundred hundred thirty dollar hundred to hundred and thirty dollar rifle. And remember, that's if you buy it from the gun store. So if you got to figure, they paid half to a third of that, depending on how big of a gun store they are. Now, when you're talking about the Mosin, something I need to cover is what it is and what it isn't. What it is, is a simple to use hardy bolt action battle rifle made for the Russian army. What it is not is a highly accurate bolt action sniper rifle, which everybody seems to confuse it for. It is not the best rifle of World War II. The only people who say that are people who only own a Mosin and nothing else. <clears throat> it is not even the best bolt gun of World War II, 
as the Springfield 30-06, the Mauser, and I would say the Enfield are all superior. Uh, they're often crudely, ma crudely made, not as bad as the later end of the year, or I'm sorry, end of the war Japanese Arasakas. Um, but don't let that fool you, they're a very hardy, very strong design. But I want to make this abundantly clear. If you are looking for a Mosin for a target, sniper rifle, whatever you're looking for, you need to save your money and get something else. Um, if you have a low cheap budget, I would recommend something like the Savage Axis or one of the entry level Remington 700s or something along those lines. If you're wanting a piece of history for an inexpensive price, this is a good idea. If you're wanting <clears throat> an inexpensive platform to do some gunsmithy work or just to kind of, you know, mess around with, it's also a good platform. If you're learning to refinish wood, gun, wood, gun, ugh, gun stocks and you want some, some wood to practice on, this is also a great idea. But I just want to make it abundantly clear, this is not a highly accurate target rifle. And the ones I've shot, even the sniper models, the best I get is 2 MOA. And that's with the rare to find match ammo and on a good day. Most of them shoot between 3 to 6 depending on the quality of the bore. Now, uh, I'm going to go into what you should look for when you're buying these. Just some of the basics. There's a lot of information on them online. There's a lot of information on them on YouTube. Um, 7.62 by 50 time or x54r by 54r.com is probably the best website dedicated to these. Will give you all the information and every little detail you could possibly want. I'm just going to cover the basics of what you sh what you should look for and consider when you're buying one of these, and maybe a little bit of history behind them if you're making your purchasing decisions. Now, if you go into your average gun store and you pull find a rack of Mosin Nagants. You're going to find probably a bunch of M9130s, and the first thing you're going to want to look for is uh, really in the receiver is the manufacturer and the date it was made, and if it has a round or a hex receiver. And I'll show you what I mean. This section right here of the gun, this is a hex model. As you can see, it's a hexagonal shape. The really the later war models are rounded, completely rounded off. The rounded ones are a lot more common because it's easier to make. That does not make them bad rifles. If you've got a round receiver, it's a definitely a good rifle. Go ahead and pick it up. But if you can find the hex, they're generally a little bit a little bit more polished. They spend a little bit more time to them because they weren't trying to chase the Russians or the Germans out of Russia while they were making them. And this is a Tula model. You can tell by the star. And it has a little arrow in there. It's very similar to the Romanian uh, in, uh, uh, military factory but it's a puts a full arrow inside so just the arrowhead and this is a 1934 model um, 1943 I believe is the most common that you'll find round receiver uh, the Ishmash is the other most common and it will have a hammer and sickle and like an olive branches and a, and a more of a crest more of a, of a uh, I hate to use the word uh, royal crest on it but it'll look more like that and uh, You'll also get with them a bayonet. Now this one below is a carbine. You won't find these as often, but they're out there. This one's a Chinese carbine. So it just has some Chinese lettering. I don't think you can even really see it. Um, there you go. You can kind of get the idea. And some numbers. I could go look them up when I want to. But really, what you want to look for is, if you're going for price-wise, go for the, this regular M9130. If you're looking for something a little more easier to handle and you got a little more money, go for the carbine. But, as I was saying, if you're going for the an accuracy model, <clears throat> for the price of the carbine, you can go out and buy a much more accurate American made, like a Savage rifle or something. So really the only reason to get the carbine is if you can get a fantastic deal on it, or you just want the carbine because it's the Mosin carbine. You've already got an M9130. Or you know you want to collect your collecting Mosins and you want the carbine. There's no real advantage to it. There are better rifles for equal or less money <clears throat> that are more accurate. And um, yeah, really, like I said, that's pretty much it. So we're gonna I'm gonna assume for this video <clears throat> that you have an entry level budget. You want to get into center fire rifles. You might want a piece of history. Well, this is your first rifle. Or at least your first center fire, and you walked into the you you saw the Mosin, you read a little about it, and you want to pick one up. Okay, first things first. If you pick one up, the first thing you're going to notice is it's going to be most of the time extremely sticky. 
and that's because it's been stored in a salt mine in the Ukraine probably and is caked in a cosmoline which is a oil grease more I guess more of a grease actually that's designed to keep it from rusting um, you can shoot it with that on there and I hope you got really strong arms if you do really you're gonna want to clean it because it's gonna be covered with it so the first thing you're gonna want to do is take it apart it's very easy to disassemble and you're gonna want to clean it uh, usually some mineral spirits paint thinner um, degreaser and a washcloth will be sufficient to clean the sucker out <clears throat> get as much of the cosmo as you can <clears throat> I'll be honest with you and if you clean it thoroughly once you start shooting it you're gonna find more and more cosmoline as you go through the rifle in some places you'll just have it for years later where you'll still be finding cosmoline <clears throat> so as I said that's the first thing you're gonna notice okay then you're, if you're really picky you may want to look at if it's an Ishmash, if it's a Tula, what year it is, what kind of receiver it is as far as just getting one that works it doesn't matter <clears throat> um, but if you're you know if you're picky about it uh, one of the things you do need to look for is if the gun's been counterboard basically they reboard the rifle because the barrel was getting shot out and if you could avoid that that's best and one of the easy ways to see if the gun's been counterboard or not is a very simple test and I'll show you how to do it here um, if you've got some ammo this makes it easier this is the 762 by 54 r Russian ammo what you want to do is see if the gun's counterboard is stick it in there like that and see how far it goes this one doesn't go very far. It doesn't even go to the end of the bullet. That's what you want to look for. If it goes in pretty far, if it goes in past the bullet, then, you know, past the, well, this one where the red line is, then it's probably been counterboard. That doesn't mean it's a bad rifle. It just means that somebody went back and reboarded it. Some of those have got pretty, mm, not desirable accuracy. <clears throat> but take it into consideration, it's not meant to be a sniper rifle anyway. So you've already got one that's counterboard, don't cry about it. But if you can avoid getting one that's counterboard, that's probably better. While you're in the end of the, oh, you're at that end of the gun, it'd be best to stick a light inside the gun and see the condition of the barrel. Make sure the lands and grooves are good. They're all gonna have to be dark because they've all been used. So, although some more than others, just make sure the barrel isn't shot out on it. Most of them are gonna be fine. Uh, they were well, used is the wrong word. Issued is the word I'm looking for. Most were refurbished. They made so many of them. Very few of them, of the ones you're ever going to find, saw combat. There's a couple guys who have battlefield pickup models, and those are all beat to hell. The stock's been repaired on them, and uh, the finish is gone. Um, but those guys collect them because they're battlefield. They're not intending to, to shoot. I'm assuming you're buying one of these because you want to shoot it. So anyway, you go and you find you one, and you get you a good bolt or a good bore. You got you the way model you want. Uh, check the stock. Make sure the stock doesn't have any big cracks in it. If it's something you just absolutely have to have, then you can find a replacement stock. It's no big deal. But you should be able to find one without a cracked wooden stock on it. Now, if you're going to do some kind of tactical build like I did on this carbine, it doesn't really matter then. But I'm, we're going to assume you just want a wood stocked Mosin. So you got your Mosin. Go home and start cleaning it. Get you some, it's really hot water, as hot as you can stand, some boiling hot water, and you're gonna wanna start cleaning it. One thing you wanna clean, for sure, is the bore. You're gonna wanna take the bolt out. These are very easy rifles to remove the bolt. You just uncock the bolt, squeeze the trigger, and it'll come right out. First thing I would do is take it outside, get you some boiling hot, hot water. If you can get out of your water heater, even better. <clears throat> Angle it up. And uh, obviously use some gloves or something to keep from burning yourself and pour as much scalding hot water as you can down that barrel. And what that'll do is one of the places the cosmoline likes to stick and that will bite you in the butt is down here in the chamber with the locking lugs of the bolt lock up. If you feel inside, you'll feel around, you'll feel with a latch on the inside of the steel. That cosmoline really likes to stick in there and then later as you fire the gun it starts to melt and get real sticky and your bolt gets real hard to turn. That's the number one cause of sticky bolt in a Mosin. Okay, once you get the bolt all cleaned out, or the uh, chamber all cleaned out, I'm sorry, you take the bolt, disassemble the bolt, then clean the bolt. There are a ton of videos online to show you how to do that, so I'm not gonna. I'll link them down below so you guys can see. It's real easy to use, or easy to do. Then the rest of it's going to be cosmetic. You're going to want to clean it. If you can't 
find enough hot water or you just haven't a place to do it, you can't get to find a place to do it, um, get your hair dryer or a heat gun, take the wood off, get it apart, tilt the gun up, like so, and get you a heat gun or hair dryer and start heating this area right here. Don't worry, you won't hurt the gun. And the cosmoline will start to run out of the gun in the inside and just get your rag and wipe it up. That's a good way of doing it too. If you're in a hurry, that's the fastest way. The hot water way is better. Another place you're going to find a lot of cosmoline is under the rear sight, under here, here. I've seen it completely caked. Um, even, near, even after you've cleaned it, you'll often see it leaking right out of here. But uh, just enough so you can reuse the rear sight usually plenty. You can get it all off fine. <clears throat> so anyway, you got your rifle all cleaned up. You got it, you checked it, it's a good rifle. Take it, well, see, you take it all apart and you cleaned it all together. You put it back together, and then I would recommend you taking it out and giving it a, sh uh, a shot, making sure it works. Now when you take a bolt apart, you need to make sure that you reassemble it properly and headspace it back correctly. Now all the videos that I will post will show you how to do that. It's very easy. Um, the Most of the bolts you will see, I'll show you guys here. <clears throat> I have a really big cut and uh, what you want to do is line up the screw with the cut. You can't really see it. Mine's just a little bit of hair off, but that's okay. Um, I can make adjustments to it. There's a, there's a tool you'll get with it. You'll be able to adjust it. But you want to get as close as that as possible. I've taken mine apart and put it back together a few times. So it's just a hair off. But it, as long as it's not ridiculously off, you'll be fine. It's, it's a Mosin. It's not a precise rifle. You just got to get it close. So get it out. Get it apart. Clean it. Put it back together. And take it out and shoot it. I'd start it with about 25 meters, 25 yards. Uh, these are our metric system rifles, so it's best to stick the meters if you can. If you shoot it, and you notice as you're shooting it, it's going right, take out your trusty bayonet, and uh, put that on there, because these Russian doctrine for shooting, or combat actually with these rifles, is to shoot them with the bayonet on, and that affects the barrel harmonics. Without the bayonet, it often pulls a little to the right. If the, you put the bayonet on it and that lines it up, great. What you're going to want to do in that case is obviously you're not going to want to shoot the bayonet on it because you're not going to want to fight Nazis. It's got a dovetail front sight. So just get you a punch and a hammer and tap that sucker over to adjust the sights. Uh, as far as I know, there's no a sight adjust tool. Most of the ones I've ever fired were, were pretty much dead on. And I didn't have to do any adjustments. Um, as far as the front sight height, I don't think it's adjustable. The rear sight is obviously for elevation, so any adjustments you make, you'll have to make back there. I haven't ever had to make any. Like I said, this is an introductory video, so as far as specifics like that, you need to ask somebody who's a Mosin Nagant expert. Alright, so let's say you got this sucker all cleaned up, you shot it, it works great, but your stock looks like it's spent the last 30 years in a gravel pit and you want to refinish it. Well. There's lots of videos online to show you how to refinish wood. The gun will come with what's called a shellac finish. It's pretty much just chips of shellac that is soaked in some kind of solvent, knowing the Russians, probably vodka, and then smeared on with the rag, and then thrown in a pile, and Ivan probably fell asleep on top of it, which didn't help the finish any. And then it's been beaten and dragged around, or it was put in an armory somewhere. If it's been refurbished, it'll have this cool spiffy neato army refurbishing mark right there like that mine's a little bit gone because I've sanded the finish but anyway you're probably going to want to refinish it now once again I'll bring your attention these rifles aren't rare if this was a rare rifle refinishing it would hurt the value but since it's not go nuts take the rifle back apart a shellac will be easy to take off what will be hard to take off is the years of grease and dirt that have had in it and any cosmoline that's been soaked into it so, if you want to remove that, there are many ways to do it. Good way to do it is to go back to your water heater, get you a big pan, um, probably from Walmart or something, Just fill it full of hot water, set your rifle stock on top of it, stripped obviously, and uh, let it soak. The steam will help uh, lift that stuff out and get you some kind of degreaser, 
spray it on there and spray it on and take a little bit of baking soda if you got that and throw that on there anything that will really soak up the material and I've seen lots of guys use cheesecloth which seems to work really well but you uh, spray your gun with that pour your baking soda on it lay your cheesecloth on it and that will soak up the dirt grease and oil out of the stock now if you're going to do this you're going to put a little bit of time and effort into it so if you just want to sand it down you can do that too but this is the best way I've seen of removing that stuff so you get all of it out then you take you some sandpaper to sand it down. Uh, I started with 400 grit and went to 600 grit. Honestly, the Mosin is, I think it's birch wood. It, it, it's not, none of the stocks are going to be real pretty. So you don't have to be really anal, I guess, about the kind of uh, sandpaper you want, as long as you sand it. And then go get you your favorite stain and slap your stain on it. And staining of wood's really easy. Just rub it with the rag, clean rag. And then if you want to finish it, some people use polyurethane. You guys have seen me. I like to use tongue oil. And uh, give yourself a nice coat, and that's all you need. And really, when it's sealed like that, you don't have to do anything else to the finish. Your guns are good to go. And that's pretty much the basics of Mosin. It's a pretty simple gun. So what I'm going to go into now is some of the parts and accessories. Um, if you want to spend a little more money on your nugget, and a couple of things I really think everybody should do to their Mosin, and some extra stuff that you might want to throw in depending on what you want to do with it. Okay, if you're going to shoot your Mosin, unless you have really big arms, or you're just determined to keep it looking the way it did from the factory, one of the things I'm going to recommend is you get a bent bolt. The standard Mosin bolt is a straight bolt. If it was on this gun, it would be sticking out here, looking, you know, facing right at you. It's short, the knob on the end isn't very good, and it's kind of a, you don't get a very good lever action and even if you've done a really good job cleaning your rifle you probably haven't got all the cosmoly out of it so the bent bolt will let obviously uh, a lever action or the lever action not a lever action like a rifle but the action of turning a lever uh, will give you more a longer fulcrum and make it easier to open the bolt if you're gonna shoot your Mosin a lot spend the fifty to hundred dollars go ahead and get your bent bolt. If this is just something you're just going to practice with once in a while, then you won't need it. But believe me, I've had a couple that I were fairly easy to turn, and a couple I had to get a 2 by 4 after about 5 or 6 shots, or a rubber mallet, and open them up. Was it fun? So get your bent bolt. Now, this is an original <clears throat> bent bolt for the sniper rifles, and this is a bent bolt I ordered off the internet. Um, I think it's by Rock Solid Mounts. They basically do a bunch of mounts and, and different stuff for the Mosin. Um, either one's good. The World War II ones are harder to get. I like the design. I like the straight down better. This actually works better as far as the feeling in your hand, but I think this just looks more authentic. It doesn't really matter. They both work. As long as they're bent, you're good. You can also do it yourself. Um, the, the little, I'm trying to think what you would call it. I guess the stem coming off the bolt is a bit short. So, if you're going to heat it and bend it, it's kind of short. I wouldn't really do that. I'd go ahead and saw it and, uh, you know, cut it off and get you a longer piece of metal and heat it and have somebody weld it for you. If you're going to go through that trouble, you might as well just order one online. But if you know somebody who's a welder, it's a piece of cake. Let them just grind it off and, and do it. Uh, ATI makes one where you grind it off and then drill and tap a bent bolt. I've used that. And yes, it did work, it did function, but I did not like it. It just did not look right on the gun. And eventually I just gave, gave that bolt to a friend and just went ahead and ordered one of these bent bolts. Um, if you just want to shoot your Mosin with iron sights, that's the only upgrade I would definitely recommend. With the regular bolt, it really sucks. So um, let's go on to the next part here. Okay, if you're big into your Mosin, or you're big into history, or you're big into movies, a lot of you have seen this. This is the PU scope for the Moses Nagant. This is the scope that was commonly attached to the sniper rifles. If you must have this scope, and when I saw it, I must have it, you're going to have to have somebody cut your Mosin stock to install it. It's also going to have to be drilled and tapped into the, into the, the uh, side of the rifle. You're going to want somebody who's a professional at this because they're going to need to level it, make sure that it's even with their gun. Um, I actually took it to a gunsmith, and he actually only charged me about a hundred bucks to do it. Probably could have done it myself, but hey, for a hundred dollars, it was worth somebody else doing. Um, there are a lot of reproductions out there. They are a few of the originals. This was supposed to be the original, but I think it's a way too good of a shape <clears throat> to be a uh, 
World War II, by, uh, but they did make these scopes all the way into the 50s and 60s. So it is possible it's an original PU scope, just not a World War II PU scope. Doesn't matter, works on the rifle. Um, if you're planning on using this for any serious thing, uh, I would not recommend it. One of the problems with this rifle, with the positioning of this scope, it's very far forward, and the stock is pretty is it's still short to Western shooters. But in order to get the proper eye relief, you really have to have your face up here. And as of yet, I cannot find a comfortable way to to put to shoulder this gun and use the PU scope. Either I have to pull the stock out farther out of my arm. Or I can't, or I just have to switch to irons. It, it, I almost want to cut the stock off shorter just so I can use the scope. So it's a kind of a pain in the butt. I won't really recommend it unless you just want the sniper scope. You, and if you're laying prone, it's a little bit easier, but the gun gives you a really good slap. It's got a pretty decent recoil on it. <clears throat> so if you have ignored what I said before and you're determined to have a World War II sniper rifle, uh, this ain't the way to go. Get you a 30 out 6. Get you one of those reproduction uh, Springfields or one of the German scopes. This one just is not very good at, as far as ergonomics. It will work. The scope's very simple to use, but it's just not made to be ergonomic. It's made for Russian midgets, so it's not going to be good for a big old six foot tall, 300 pound Westerner to try and use. On the other hand, if you just want to scope your Mosin, and you're not particular, there are several ways of doing it. I have used a couple of different ways <clears throat> in this current setup is my favorite. Now I know it looks kind of goofy right now, but let me explain. <clears throat> the mount I have here is a mount called a JMEK mount, J-M-E-K mount. It is basically a steel band that wraps under the action and is held in both sides by some Allen screws. It's very, it's crude but it's very stable, holds a zero, and it's reversible. You can take it off and it wasn't harm your gun. Now, it has a piece of Picatinny rail, so you can put your scope. Now, if you're asking me, why do I have this set up like this? This is a Russian Dragunov style scope. It has a very short eye relief, <clears throat> so I had to put the scope pretty far back, which is why these two scope rings are on one side. Now, it doesn't affect the accuracy. The scope is rock solid because I know how to mount a scope. It looks a little goofy, but it works. Have I had to do this a different way, I would have done a different optic. But it works, and since the Dragunov scope is designed for the round it fires, it actually is pretty accurate. Since it's, if you know how to read a Dragunov scope, you can use it in the Mosin Nagant, and it's pretty close to having the, you know, the correct location. 400 meters is about 400 meters. So I was actually surprised. You actually might do a little better because it seems to have a little more accuracy then the, well, I never shot a dragon off, but I have shot the Chinese Tiger, which is pretty similar. And uh, this, despite the fact this was an old crappy Chinese uh, beat up surplus Mosin, I think it actually shot as good, or if not better, than the Tiger with this scope. As far as putting lead on target, man sized target, the Tiger killed it for accuracy. But anyway, I'm getting off the subject. If you want to mount a scope on your Mosin, this is an inexpensive, easy and reversible way to do it. <clears throat> there are many others. Uh, the rear sight can be removed and it has a groove in it and there's lots of people who mount a pistol scope up here on the front of the rifle using that groove as a uh, I think it's um, I can't remember the specifics uh, but yeah you need a certain size ring you can find it online and you can mount a pistol scope. You have to mount a pistol scope because the scope so far up here the eye relief doesn't work back here for a rifle scope. <clears throat> for a Mosin that's great. 3x, 4x, I think is what most pistol scopes come with the most, and that's perfect for this kind of rifle. It's not really accurate, and it ain't a sniper rifle. Even a sniper rifle isn't good enough to be a sniper rifle nowadays. That's a good way of mounting an optic. Rock solid makes a permanent mount that screws into the gun, and it's quite a bit better, but it's permanent. You have to drill into the receiver to mount it, and I've used it, and the problem with it is when you're using it, even with low rings, is you can't get a good cheek weld, you get kind of a chin weld. Basically, when you mash your face up against the side of the stock, you can't put your fat face, part of your face here, you, you have to raise your head up a little bit, so your chin's against it. <clears throat> you can shoot like that, but it, it's not very comfortable if you're used to shooting long range. So, that's the most common other thing that people want on their Mosins. They want to mount a scope on it. Now, your scope doesn't make your gun any more accurate. No gun is a sniper rifle because you threw a scope on it. All it's going to let you do is see farther. 
and you're going to have to learn how to use a scope. It's not like the media likes to pretend. I've heard people say they wanted to ban scope rifles because it's unsporting. Like they think if you drop the crosshairs over it, you're magically going to hit what you aim at. You're obviously going to have to learn about parallax, about the parallel lines of how the scope and the board line up, windage, elevation, all that stuff. Learning to use a scope isn't, isn't you know, it's not point and click. You kind of have to do a lot of learning on how to, to get one. Anyway, beyond the scope of this video, so let's continue. <clears throat> Next thing, the trigger. Oh god, the trigger on these guns. It's not the most awful trigger. That one by far and away goes to the factory trigger on my Sega 308. God, that trigger's awful. But the trigger on these nuggets, that's what their nickname is, ain't good. You can use it. It's heavy. It's got a lot of creep to it. And it feels like you're driving a piano across a gravel road. Uh, but you can use it. Tim E makes a very nice replacement trigger for your Mosin. But this is a common problem with gun parts for Mosins. The bent bolt you're looking at, if you want that, is a hundred bucks. If you're looking at almost any scope mount, you're looking at another hundred bucks. Now you're looking at a hundred bucks for a Timmy trigger. Are you seeing where I'm getting at with this? <clears throat> if you just wanted one of those parts, you'd be okay. The Timmy trigger also has a safety that actually comes up through here, and you have to haul out your stock, but it works. I actually wanted to get one for this rifle. I just hadn't got around to it. I just I can't see spending another hundred dollars on this rifle. Most of the parts I got on it I got for Christmas presents, so I didn't have to spend a lot. So yeah, the trigger kind of sucks. You get used to it. It is usable. It's just not very good. There are other ones out there, but everybody really likes the Timmy trigger for it. Another thing you're gonna look at is replacement stocks. This one's a Monte Carlo stock. Works pretty good. Just a simple polymer stock. There's an Archangel stock out there, but you even seen a, for some ungodly reason, there's a Bullpup stock out there for this. I, I can't imagine. I mean, first of all, it's ugly as all hell. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It is ugly. I'll see if I, I'll post some pictures if I can find them. But, whoa. I, I mean, I've seen Bolt Action, you know, Barrett's or 50 Cal. They're still ugly, but at least it makes sense. But a Bolt Action Mosin's, uh, uh, anyway. There's a couple different stocks. There's replacement wood stocks and polymer stocks. Like I said, once again, it really depends on what you want to do with it. Um, I'm not going to say I recommend it or not because that this it's a stock. A gun comes with a stock. It's a wooden stock. You know, wood is a good way to go. The only downside to wood is it can warp if it gets wet. So, you know, whatever you need it for. But uh, I think the factory stock works just fine. But they are out there. The Chinese one I replaced with this Monte Carlo because it was in horrible condition. And I tried to sand out the dents, and they were so deep in the wood. It looked like it had acne as a kid, and ended up looking like, uh, eh, what's his name, from uh, Battlestar Galactica, the captain, the actor. I'll put a picture of his face up. It, yeah, it was that cratered. It looked bad. It looked real bad. So uh, I just went ahead and just ditched it and uh, sold it to somebody and got this nice stock on there. Edward James Almost, that's the dude's name. Got it at the last minute. <clears throat> ammo, ammo, ammo. If you're getting a Mosin to Gaunt... This is probably one of the reasons you're getting it, <clears throat> because it shoots a high-powered, decently accurate, center-fire rifle cartridge, well, relatively speaking, high-powered, that is extremely cheap, and if you weren't, didn't know that before, you do now. I've seen crates of this stuff on the internet for sale, 440 rounds for 70 to $80. That's a lot of money for a rifle center-fire, you can't get 30 out 6 that cheap. And this is essentially its equivalent. This is corrosive most of the time. Uh, so you're going to want to clean your gun. Keep in mind a couple things. One, your barrel is already not in the best of condition. So don't worry about it too bad. It's really the salts and the primer that are corroded for the most part. Although some of the other older ammo can be completely corrosive. Uh, so clean your gun out after you shoot it. Just run some hot water or some hot soapy water down the barrel. And you'll be fine. There is Rush. This is Russian... Heavy ball, I think. There's Russian ammo, there's Czech ammo, there's, uh, I think there's even East German. Uh, I haven't seen any Chinese or Vietnamese. It's mostly going to be Eastern European, probably Russian. <clears throat> I've seen some Hungarian stuff. Uh, it'll shoot to varying degrees of accuracy. Um, it's various, it's got different loads in it. There's all kinds. I've seen guys who just collect Mosin Nagant ammo. They don't, even, they don't even shoot it, they just collect the ammo. <clears throat> there's all kinds of it out there. Uh, and it's cheap. So that's one of the best things about these rifles. Um, having learned my lesson, I, if you, some of you guys remember, I had that nice Savage 111 uh, bolt action 7mm Remington mag. And 
one of the two downsides I had with it was it had a lot of recoil. It was actually uncomfortable to shoot. I mean, I'm not a baby, but after about 10 rounds of it, I was getting sick of it. And two, it was $35 a box before all the gun craze took off. And that's expensive. If I want to go out there, just want to shoot it, you know, even if it didn't have insane recoil, it's expensive to shoot if you're on a budget, which let's face it, nowadays most of us are. There's stuff you can shoot this crap all day. And it's common. That 7mm Remington mag is pretty common. I could go into any gun store and find it. But this stuff I can find at gun store, Army Navy store, I think Walmart has it. It's a really common cartridge for America. That's not 223, 22 long rifle, or 12 gauge common, but it's pretty damn close. So, it's a good ammo to have, and it works in any rifle. Chinese, Russian, Czechoslovakian, doesn't matter. It's a good round to shoot, um, and you can be had for very cheap. I had a whole bag full of it, and I've actually given more of it away than shot it, because I talked my friends into buying Mosins who didn't have one, and uh, gave them some ammo to start with. So, I've rambled for 20 minutes or so, so you're probably asking yourself, okay, sum it up for me, what's your point? My point is, if you got $130 or so burning in your pocket, and you go in your local gun store and you don't have one of these, then my video was to tell you why you should get one and why you should not. If you want a piece of World War II history for an inexpensive price, it's a good gun to have. If you want an inexpensive bolt-action gun that shoots cheap ammo, that's reliable, that you'll never need a gunsmith for, uh, some, it's a good gun. I've seen some guys use it to take down deer. Plenty capable of doing that. I think you could do better, but if you got 130 bucks and you've never gone deer hunting before, and you don't know if you'll like it, this will definitely do it. You won't, you won't have any oh, problems yeah. with your gun hunting the deer. If you are looking for a highly accurate sniper rifle, you do not want to look at this gun. Save you another couple hundred bucks and get you a Savage or a Remington or a Marlin or any other American-made bolt-action gun on a Mauser action. <clears throat> It'll be smoother. It'll have a better trigger. It'll be way more accurate. And, uh, yeah, this is not a sniper's rifle. If you're looking for the best bolt gun of World War II, you're looking at the wrong gun. Please head over and look at the Mausers, the Springfield 30-06s, and the, uh, the Ailey Enfields, as I think they're all superior guns, especially the, well, the two Mausers, let's be honest. The Springfield and the, and the 8 millimeter Mauser are the best the bolt guns. Version. If you're looking for the best gun of World War II, you're definitely looking at the wrong one, as the Garand or the STG-44 is far superior. Um, if you're looking for a piece of Russian history, definitely a good gun to have. It's been around for two centuries. It's fought in almost every war the Russians have been in since its inception. It's made back when the Tsar was in charge of Russia, and if you guys do not know, <clears throat> which... Uh, isn't so wouldn't be surprising. The Tsar of Russia, the Emperor of France, the King of England, the King or family of Denmark, and a couple other countries were actually all related to each other. They were all cousins and second cousins. Because in Europe it was very common in order to keep the peace to have the royalty intermarry with each other. And that way you wouldn't want to go with your cousin. You don't want to go to war with your cousin or anything, do you? It's family, right? So that's why you have a lot of this Russian, French, Belgian co-development on firearms. <clears throat> and this isn't the only example. The Nagant pistol, same thing. So if you're looking for a piece of Russian history, if you're a big fan of Russia, definitely go. If you are a Slavabu, somebody who just loves Russia, Spencer AK-74, I'm talking to you. If <laughs> you just love they want to be a Russian, this is definitely something you can have because nothing kills fascists like a Mosin Nagant. It'll tear through a Panzer tank, comrade. So if you've got your SKS and your AK and, uh, well, let's be realistic, it's probably all you can afford because you're a Slava boo, you're definitely going to want one of these. <clears throat> so I hope that gives you a good idea of what to look for in a Mosin. I will, um, hopefully, I'm going to put this video up, I'm going to have to splice a bunch of pictures in. If you have any questions on one of these, I will be happy to answer it. Uh, if you're looking for somebody who's an expert, I can't, is Marshall Zukov, if he's still got his channel up, is a Mosin expert. He knows way more than I do. He collects these things. He's a good guy to ask. I write better than 8888. Started off his channel really with the Mosins. He has a really nice finished Mosin. Uh, not finished as in crossing the finish line, but finished as made by the Finns, which those are the Cadillacs of Mosin Nagant. So you're going to spend $300 on one, get a finished model. 
because they're great. They're better than the Russian ones. <clears throat> and there's a bunch of other ones. I just wanted to make you a good, I was trying to make it short, I think I failed at that, a good video to give you just the basics of what to look for, assuming you never, you've only barely heard about them or didn't really know what to look for. And uh, some of the options you have and what I've tried out. And I'll post a few pictures of what you'd expect for accuracy with surplus ammo. And I think I got one picture of match ammo. I'll post that up. So, guys, I hope that helps. I'm sorry it's been a couple weeks since I had a video. I'm still looking for a job. And uh, my finances are good for right now, but job hunting is getting really frustrating. So, I just really haven't been in the mood to make one. I got some parts coming in, I think, that I ordered back in January. They sent me a a tracking number and they took the money out of my account and then they put the money back and so now I'm not sure because the tracking number says the labels are printed but I, it hasn't shipped so I don't know what's going on with that I tried to call them but they're pretty much saying uh, if you want to send us an email we're not going to answer it because they're behind so whatever hope this video helps if you guys got any questions let me know if I can't answer it I will find you someone who will more videos to come it's not going to be in three weeks guys I promise I'm going to get you some more stuff coming up um, I've tried to put a lot of effort into my videos to get you some information that nobody else will tell you. Um, so that's it. I'm rambling. I'm going to go. See you guys later.